Welcome to the premiere edition of Research Destinations at Keeping New York History Alive. I am Bonnie Wood and today am researching in Warwick, located in the Hudson Valley region of New York State, with esteemed local history librarian Sue Gardner, who will share several items in the collection. You know something about the resources we offer at the library. Physically in the library, we have the usual thing, books and vertical files and things. And I usually, when people visit, try to pull out a few more interesting things to show them. One of the things that I try to show them is this manuscript. And I have this on our digital collection as well. And that is a report done by Warwick's local militia leader in 1779. His name is John Haythorne. In July of 1779, he was the leader of a battle called the Battle of Minisink. And when he came back from the Battle of Minisink, it didn't turn out well for our side. Um, he had to sit down and he had some splaining to do. So he came back to his house here in Warwick. He was wounded in three places. And so he is putting the report about what happened onto this piece of paper. And as you can see, this is not a really nicely written thing. This has lots of scratch outs in it. And one of the things that when I talk to the kids, uh, I talk about using cursive as a way of experiencing a person from history in a more immediate way. And this is certainly one of the pieces of paper that you can do that with from all his cross outs and blotches. And he actually uh, apologizes to his commander for writing such a messy report is that he was traumatized, he was in pain, and he was trying to explain the disastrous thing that had happened to them. So that's something that is in our collection here physically um, in, in a reproduction, and it's also on our digital collection. Another thing that people really like looking at is the historical maps. So this is a historical map, and I'm just gonna show you a little bit. There's a little bit of a glare that was done in the 1820s. And this is a kind of an advertisement. A man named Alexander had a lot of what is known as the black dirt at that time period. We have this whole region of Warwick where it was a vast swamp and it was gradually drained by settlers, first the English and the Irish, and then um, kind of accelerated a lot when the Polish immigrants got here. So that whole region is called the black dirt and it is one of the most important agricultural uh, regions that kind of feeds the markets of the new york metro area this man was a land speculator he was here briefly but he was mostly uh he was scottish but he was in london and britain most of the time so on this he is advertising this vast acreage as hemp lands, H-E-M-P, hemp lands, because hemp was a really important product. And at this time period, people were kind of seeing dollar signs, um, not only because of the textile markets that were starting to really explode, but also because hemp was one of the things that you used for the, um, the cordage for the ships. So there are a number of instances where people are thinking they're gonna be able to make it rich by raising hemp on the dirt here in the black dirt, it's apparently perfect soil for the hemp crops. And it's really ironic because this did not work out well for them. Um, it did flood regularly still un until the Polish immigrants came in and really did a better job of drainage. Um, but it's just, just so interesting and contemporary now because Warwick has become one of the places in the, in the area where we have this, this wonderful market for hemp now that uh, we have medicinal hemp we can use and I believe you're allowed to grow the other kind of hemp as well. Um, so we have three or four different facilities that are actively growing hemp now. And I tell people, well, you know, Warwick has, has had a long romance with this crop. It's not something that just happened. So those are a few things, Bonnie. What else would you like? And this, is, uh, this map is dated 1825 yeah. uh, for the, uh, the black dirt in this area. Can you tell us a little bit about now uh, in addition to what you just told us about the hemp, but what else? 
What else is being grown in the black dirt of this region? Well, the black dirt um, for many, many years was known for its onions crops. Um, at one point, I think something like a third of the onions eaten in the United States uh, were from the black dirt. There's a whole um, older National Geographic article that was done historically about the black dirt and the Polish immigrants there. Celery, lettuce, there's um, a whole movement now to kind of do more green market things. So a lot of the farmers will take their produce right straight down to the green market in, in Manhattan and sell. Um, and uh, there's, there, it's, it's actually technically on the edges of it that aren't actively farmed. It's really close to just still being a wetland. They have constantly have issues with when there's a lot of rain, even with all the drainage and uh, many, many decades of working with it, it can fill right up. Uh, several years ago when we had those two or three hurricanes in a row, the whole thing was underwater at that point. Mm -hmm. So they lost everything. Uh, Sue, what would you say is your favorite book in the public, uh, uh, the local history library? In the local think? history yes. collection? Yes. To sit down and read, one of the things that I find most interesting is, um, it's called Warwick Woodlands, and it was written by um, a man whose pseudonym is Frank Forrester, and um, he was writing 1830s, 1840s, all the way, his things are published all the way into the 1850s. His name really was Henry William Herbert. And he was an Englishman that um, had apparently acted up a little bit and so his family sent him to the United States. He didn't live here, but he loved to hunt. He was a sporting writer, so he has many, many essays that he wrote while hunting, <clears throat> excuse me, hunting things here in Warwick. And um, even though his aesthetic was to experience the animals um, while hunting them, he really was an early naturalist and he makes notes about we have to be sure to not, not hunt the place out and conserve the wildlife. Henry William Herbert um, was a nobleman and if you've ever seen Downton Abbey, that is his family's castle that was used as the filming. So he's one of our favorite characters. I think he actually drove people crazy when he came up here because he would just go through the fields with his horse and not care that he was trampling them. But it's a really nice nice read um, and to compare and contrast how the appreciation of nature for some people who are hunters is different from the aesthetic of appreciating nature of people who do not hunt. We would both love for you to come to visit Warwick, actually come to Warwick in Orange County, part of the Hudson Valley in New York State, but also if you're not able to physically come here, Sue Gardner has done a wonderful, wonderful job of putting many items online and not just put them online, done that in a fashion that you will be able to use them for your research. Uh, perhaps you'd like to share a couple of those. Okay, so we have two basic repositories that you can get into from home, and they're free to anyone who wants to go in and do research. There are people from all over the country who do family history research in our databases. One is the Warwick Heritage Database, and that's a product called um, Montage, and you can actually load all kinds of media files in there as well. So there are lots of text files and photographs. There is some film footage in there, and it's a fun place to just go explore, or if you're looking for something specific. Um, the other thing we have is we've scanned most of the two weekly local newspapers on a different site. Um, so there's lots of riches there. Uh, if you're looking for some items about women's suffrage or um, any of the topics that you would encounter uh, in, the, in the broader context of American history, you'll be able to find examples of it there. So we're happy to provide that. Uh, we, we've been very lucky that our administration has been supportive of that. Thank you for joining us today and we're off to do some research. I'm going to uh, go into the local history room and take a look at what is available here about the 1919 colony, the first African-American resort in New York State, and also take a look at it. There are a couple interesting crimes, so more to come. Thank you again. Thanks for having me.